Hi guys! I am very excited to talk to you about my top 10 favorite poetry books. The last time I made a video like this was two or three years ago now. And since then I've done a lot more reading. I have this little stack here. These books have resonated with me on an astronomical level and they've been so inspiring as I'm working on getting my third poetry book together. I think they deserve so much love and I hope you find some in this video that you want to read yourself. So going in no particular order, we're going to start off with Brat by Sophie Crocker. I would describe this one as an exploration on femininity, the complex and somewhat gruesome thoughts on sex and sexuality, as well as longing. I find the words in this book to be quite descriptive and vivid. There's this interesting balance between raw and raunchy language mixed with this desperation for love. For this book's example poem, I'm going to be reading Self Portrait in Scorpio. Since I was little, the men have called me hospital bait. Touch me and I'll frostbite your extremities. When I am hungry, I just devour. I couldn't stand to be more delicate. I used to get turned inside out and shaken for pennies. Have you ever been loved because you are easy? On my tiptoes, I can almost reach what I can almost reach. Can you not say destroy like it's a bad word? The men used to gossip. It's not fun if she wants it, but I want them all dead and that's so wonderful. Wait. Can you not beg as if it'll get you forgiven? Shed an organ, shed your name. I've often been just pretty enough to eat. How do you think I feel? Food chain all disarray at my feet. Keep asking what I cannot see and I'll say make me, make me, make me. Another one of my favorite books is Disintegrate Dissociate by Ariel Twist. This book is very much an exploration of self. Ariel Twist is a trans indigenous woman from the prairies who moved to eastern Canada. This book just really talks about what it's like to be her and move through the world. It is, without sugarcoating, very depressing. Probably the saddest one amongst this group. The poem I'll read to you today is called Bear. There is so much I can't speak with this tongue longing to see if colonization tastes the same on you, if I kiss the tears off your face. Will I remember the salt in mine and forgive them? Will I remember another life where I don't have to ask in English, could you feel this longing too? This is the only book Ariel Twist has, but I'm definitely going to keep an eye out for any future publications because this book made such an astronomical impact on me when I first read it. Um, in a creative way, but also just I felt like I was really absorbing and learning about a certain life that I've never had to live. So I highly, highly recommend this one. Next up, we have Coconut by Nisha Patel. This book touches on three different topics, all of which I really resonated with. The one is being a second generation immigrant, the second is queerness, and the third is her relationship with her body. It's one of those works I would describe as sexy sad. There's this sense of melancholy throughout sultry words and it just hits the right spot. Um, the example poem I'm going to be reading today is called Self Portrait as a Tampon. A myth to think that I am either white or used, one-time necessity to young legs that carried me across a soccer field when the boys still pushed back without fear. I am bloodied and burdened with the weight of growing breasts and swallowed words, taking space in my stomach that clenches inward. I wait for the yank and pull on my hair, wonder which part of me will grow up to be discarded. Another one of my favorite poetry books is called Exhibitionist by Molly Cross Blanchard. This one this one. I could talk endlessly about why I love this book. It's like reading someone's memories or most intimate thoughts. It's a very offbeat, unafraid sort of book. There are stories about being Métis and her different family dynamics. She explores a lot of emotions she's felt and even has quite a few poems about masturbating. It's a very shameless book and in turn feels quite empowering to read. The one I'm going to sample today is the very first one which is called the same title exhibitionist. The most orgasms I ever had in one go come over Christmas vacation in my childhood basement bedroom. Door cracked open, sheets peeled back, pussy in plain view of the cat. Clawing carpet. Is this how flashers feel in their trench coats and chest hair? I'd like to sit in the park with my thumb stuck up my nose and wait for someone to notice. I want to be more like the woman in Burger King who eats fries straight off the floor. The woman who cries in Walmart when her preteen son says, fuck you mom, for the first time in front of the greeter yanking carts at the strip club. I eat onion rings, watch the dancers watching me from upside down in her halo of light. When will my roommate notice? 
the way I air dry underwear on the corner of the hallway mirror, symbol of sex in his reflection. I want to feel like a display model lipstick dug at the nub, smeared across the mouths of strangers, a much handled sample of the real thing. Next up, we have I'll Fly Away by Rudy Francisco. I talked about his book Helium in the other poetry video. This one's gotta be here. He is one of my favorite poets in the world. He has a lot of spoken word content accessible on YouTube if you wanna check him out before reading his books. This one in particular is quite creative. On top of the regular formatted poetry, there is a bit of blackout, as well as dictionary definition pages, where he took a word and created a poem as the meaning for it. In I'll Fly Away, Rudy Francisco talks a lot about the Black experience in America. He also goes into childhood memory and family dynamics a bit, and different loves he's had throughout his life. The poem I'll be reading from his book is called My Parents. My parents were in a long distance relationship for over 30 years and they lived in the same house. I learned you can be right next to someone but a thousand miles away from them without asking geography its opinion. Often the space between two people can be measured by the number of times they look at each other and feel nothing. Sad, but so good. Next up, we have Night Sky with Exit Wounds by Ocean Vong. If you've watched any of my bookish videos before, you already know that Ocean Vong is my favorite author. There's a little blurb about him on the back of the book that very much describes what he writes about. It says, his obsessions are love, family, violence, the sacred, the erotic, maleness, and femininity. This book bounces between heavily queer and erotic poems, and then ones about his family traumas, um, their experiences with immigration and war more specifically. The poem I'll be reading is called Devotion. Instead, the year begins with my knees scraping hardwood, another man leaving into my throat. Fresh snow crackling on the window, each flake a letter from an alphabet. I've shut out for good. Because the difference between prayer and mercy is how you move the tongue, I press mine to the navel's familiar hole, molasses threads descend towards devotion. And there's nothing more holy than hiding a man's heartbeat between your teeth, sharpened with too much air. This mouth, the last entry into July, silenced with fresh snow crackling on the window, and so what if my feathers are burning? I never asked for flight, only to feel this fully, this entire, the way snow touches bare skin and I suddenly snow no longer. Another one I've really loved is called Content Warning Everything by Aquaki Amazi. This is definitely the thinnest poetry book out of all the ones I'm showing. There's less than 50 poems, but they have this really interesting way of talking about the human experience and complexity of our emotions through very fantical imagery. This book is just in a world of its own and the poem I'm gonna read from it is called Thief. I stood in the sea today, shells soaking in dirty water, white foam against my thighs, oiled men on the sand with their cocks in their hands, pulling and pulling. I was alone, salt and sweet matted hair. I had not seen you and it was good, complete, me and my colored quilt and none of your loud face. You showed up in the surf, always washing me away, always a cold tide, a screaming space breaks over my body. I want and wait for you while you sit pulling and pulling my pieces in your hands. Who allowed you in? Kill all traitors, even me. You juggle my faces. Look, I want those. Give them back. It's such a beautiful book. Then we have Sugar Work by Katie Maria. This book talks about a few different things. The one is her relationship with her body and more specifically her relationship with food, that of which ties into her childhood memories. She explores girlhood and the strange relationship many girls have with their moms. And then sprinkled throughout, she talks about marriage and divorce. There's just some really, really beautiful pieces in here. And the poem I'm gonna read today has the same title, Sugar Work. The cake edges the counter, royal and layered orange cream fondant, punctured or slit with a knife or peeled off exactly, white sugar circles like a Saint Corona. My mother ate it dry. Days old, pleasure was always hers for the taking. I abstained. I was afraid of the cake, 
the edible sun, that half-naked photo of her, younger and firmer, dripping in the kitchen. I thought there was no safe amount of sugar, so I pretended to take none. Next up, I have One and a Half of You by Leanne Dunick. This book is a little simpler, a little more minimalistic in the language used. Fully, the book is about the author's experience being biracial. There are some poems about adolescent love sprinkled here and there, but I would say 90% of it is her experience being Asian American. I value it a lot. Leanne Dunick has this very powerful way of describing small, mundane moments, but her big feelings on them. The poem I'm gonna read from her book doesn't have a title, but it's on page 60. From torn plastic menus, two chasu rice noodles in soup. The waitress mutters dialect as she walks away. Cantonese, my mother's muddled, his never spoke a word. Two tables away, an elderly couple rinse chopsticks in tea. Is that normal? I shake my head. Will we do the same when we're old? I click sticks between my fingers. I don't even hold them properly. This one is so lovely. And so the last book I picked as part of my top 10 favorite poetry books is called Other People's Comfort Keeps Me Up at Night by Morgan Parker. She talks a lot about the black experience, but specifically through the lens of being a black woman. She has poems about various father figures in her life and neglectful past lovers. There's sort of this wavering spiritual tone to it as well. And all in all, the way it's written is just so elegant. The actual words and form of it all is just extraordinarily beautiful. So the finishing poem for this video will be Face Cathedral. Blue songs are how I feel when I let strangers use my lighter. Already traffic on the expressway. Plants in rows like apartments. In Africa, this man is a lawyer, but here he sells records on the street. He says, everyone is so quick to tell the world about their problems, but they won't tell a priest. He says he needs a woman with hollow cheeks. By now, only imprints of flowers, knobs in trees, swollen faces. When dogs look at me as they pass, I imagine they are ancestors watching. This is the difference between fog in the skyline and me, or a steamboat frozen on the river. The trumpet solo in your face in a new world. Confessions heard in English, Spanish, Portuguese, and sticks on wood. And with that, those are my top 10 favorite poetry books. I hope you enjoyed the readings and found some books you want to read more of. If you have any recommendations, make sure to leave them in the comments, as well as like and subscribe if you already haven't. And I'll see you in a couple weeks at my next video. Bye!